Hey, what's up guys? So this is going to be another video on low power design. Uh, this time what we're doing is putting the Arduino into an ultra low power deep sleep state, but letting an external real time clock wake it back up at some very accurate uh, time interval. So like I can wake the Arduino up at 10 seconds from now, one minute from now, a couple hours from now. Uh, I could even do days, months, uh, or even years if you had a project that needed to only wake up once every couple of years. So anyway, that's how this works. And you're looking at a 3.3 volt system here. Also works at 5 volts. Um, and it's got a sleep current of 1.4 microamps. So I've got the calibrated benchtop meter up there measuring the input current to this system here. And that's really good. So a sleep current of 1.4 microamps. And it can sleep like that uh, until it needs to wake up at that specified time. So this is nice. And a lot of this here builds off of my other videos on low power design. Um, and in fact, you might be thinking, well, why not use the internal watchdog timer to the Arduino? Well, uh, you can certainly do that, but you're limited to, I think like 12 second intervals. So every 12 seconds you would have to then just go right back to sleep, which is fine, but you, you're still waking up for that, you know, that brief amount of time to put yourself right back to sleep. Also that timing interval is not as accurate. It's actually really, really bad. Uh, so over time, if you had to wake up once an hour or whatever, just using that watchdog timer, it would be all over the place and it wouldn't be very accurate. Also, it's not as low current as this setup here. Uh, if you go back to those videos, you'll see, I think that at 3.3 volts, the watchdog timer sleep mode would pull around maybe five microamps or so at 3.3 volts. So it's, it's still pretty good, but not as good as the real-time clock solution you see here. So what you're looking at here, though, is a system that's waking up every 10 seconds, and the only work the Arduino is doing is blinking that LED, as you can have probably have already noticed. So in the code, uh, it's very, very simple, and we'll, we'll go through all of this. So you see, go to sleep for 10 seconds, check the, alar the alarm, make sure we were... Uh, uh, we, we did wake up after 10 seconds, um, blink the LED and then just go right back to sleep. So that's all there is to, to the code. And we'll go through that, uh, in detail in a second, but first let me just explain what the hardware is here. So, uh, I did a full video explaining how this real time clock works. And this is the, uh, the MCP 7940 real time clock from microchip. It's also battery backed. So if you needed to keep the time, even when the power was removed, you could do so. And I've got the schematic up here and everything. Uh, of course, this is I squared C based. So we've got the two uh, wires going back to the Arduino with 10K pull-ups on each of those. And we're using the multi-function pin here as the alarm output from the RTC to the Arduino's interrupt pin to wake it up. And if that also has a uh, 10k pull up on it. In fact, let me jump over to the 328 boards wiki page here to show you that pinout real quick. So right over here, you can see that analog pins four and five are used for the I squared C data and clock lines. So those are just tied right over to the real time clocks, uh, clock and data line and one 10k pull up on each of those. And over here, digital pin two is used for the interrupt pin uh, zero there to wake up. And uh, anyway, so this is just a great diagram here to help figure out which, you know, what, what all of the different uh, pins are and the different various functionalities you get with each pin. Okay, and if I jump over here to the data sheet for the MCP7940, we're going to refer to this register map again for, uh, for this. Uh, and really not a whole lot has changed from the last video I did on the real-time clock. So, and in fact, this code here uh, is a direct copy over from that last video I did. I just added in the new sleep functionality. So, uh, we'll just walk right through that here. We'll start at the setup, and you can see we're still attaching an interrupt to uh, that interrupt pin zero, which is actually digital pin two 
and uh, falling edge on that, calling the RTC MFP function for that. We'll, we'll get into that later on. We initialize the RTC same way as before, and I'll go right down to that function. It's all using the wire library here, which is the one that comes with the Arduino IDE. Um, and we're setting that to 100 kilohertz. Uh, we do wire.begin to get things rolling. And then we clear out the control register here in the real-time clock. And you see like wire.begin transmission, RTC address, all of these things are pound defines up here. So there's the seven bit RTC address. You can see I've got the control register address here. And you're gonna see that throughout this code. Everything I'm not using right now, I just commented out. So all these other pound defines, I just, I've, I've got them in there if you need them, but they're pound or uh, commented out for now. And in fact, down here, I also have a lot of code commented out because I'm just not using it here in this low power uh, deep sleep example. Okay, so let me get back to the initialization function here. So yeah, 100 kilohertz, get things rolling start talking to the RTC here and we're going to write to the control register and just clear it all out to zeros for uh, for our default setting here and um, then we start talking to the RTC again now at the RTC weekday register and what we we're doing here is going to read that out the RTC weekday register out so that data is stored right here when we read it out. We're just going to flip a single bit in that register, specifically the VBAT enable bit to enable the battery backup functionality of the part. And you know what? We're really not using that for this example, but I just left that code in here anyway. So that technically could be commented out as well and everything would work just fine. Okay, so we write that then back into the RTC. So it's kind of like, um, you know, it, it takes a few steps there. We first read it out that one byte and then flip a bit and then write it back in. And the reason we do that, of course, is so that we don't change other things in that same register. Okay, then we read the seconds byte out. So same kind of thing. We want to read out the seconds register get that data out right here, flip a single bit in that one, and we're only flipping the start bit here to get things started, to actually start the RTC. And again, we don't need that uh, for this example, but that's okay, everything still works. And then this here is the new functionality here, just for the, uh, the sleep functionality, and what this is going to do is uh, enable the alarm uh, bit so we're enabling alarm zero so again it's in the control register here go over here I know I'm kind of jumping back and forth here uh, so over in the control register we're just going to flip a single bit in there alarm zero enable now we could have now that I'm actually going through this we could have flipped it up here when we set the entire control register to zero so we probably could have done it there just to, to optimize things, but that's all right. So that's enabled right there. Let me go, where am I? Lost my spot here. Here it is. So right down here, sorry. Right here is where we are enabling alarm zero. Read it out, flip that one bit, and then write it back in. Okay, so yeah, that was uh, that's the whole initialization. And then jumping back up here to the setup, we then go and set all unused pins as outputs, which helps with the low current consumption of the part. So by default, everything is set as uh, digital inputs. Uh, this sets everything as digital outputs and keeps them low. The only pin I'm using is digital pin two for the interrupt. And then of course also, if I go back over here, you'll see that digital pins 18 and 19 are used for the I squared C bus. So I don't set those pins as outputs either. Uh, and then right here, this is a copy right from the uh, low power demo code. So this turns off the A to D, the analog to digital converter. Uh, and then this actually enables the part to be able to go to sleep. 
okay so I won't go into that at all in this video but that's just a direct copy from that video and I'll link it uh, that to that video in the description below so you can see you know how that all works and then in the loop here uh, the first thing we do is actually call out the function to go to sleep and we pass a variable there which is in seconds and one of the cool things here is that you know if you look at the seconds register here it splits it up the byte into the tens part the tens digit and the ones digit so if we pass a pass a hexadecimal one zero in that will actually equal ten seconds so that's that's kind of a convenient way to do that as long as you represent your variable here in hexadecimal so zero x one zero ten seconds and then i just want to show you what's going on there in the go to sleep function so right here the first thing we do is just clear the seconds variable or the seconds register all together so real quick i just want to explain how i'm doing this this uh you know this interval because what i'm doing is setting the rtc up to wake me up at some period of time and what i could do one way would be like all right well what is my time now and just using my clock here for reference my time now is 629 and let's say I wanted to wake up one minute from now, I would set that to 6.30. And I'd also have to match the seconds as well. Uh, and you would do that if you needed to use the RTC's time, the actual time it's keeping for you. But in my example here, what I'm doing is I'm only using the RTC to wake me up. That's its only purpose. So what I'm doing is clearing out the real-time clock's key time. You know, I'm setting everything to zero. So by doing that, I'm setting it all the way to zero, and then I'm setting the alarm time to just 10 seconds. Okay, so if it starts at zero, and I'm clearing that back to zero, it will then alarm 10 seconds from that zero place, right? So I think that makes sense, and hopefully as we go through this code, that'll be a little bit uh, clearer. But you see here we've got, uh, you know, the first thing we're doing is clearing the... Uh, the time or the seconds there to zero okay and we're only we're only waking up in seconds here you could do the same thing for minutes hours uh, weekdays date months years you could just clear out all of those to zero but since we're only waking up every 10 seconds here could be 59 seconds or whatever you wanted to do I'm only clearing the seconds and uh, I have to of course keep the start bit enabled there so that it continues to to uh, to count but anyway that sets it to zero and then now we actually set the future time right here and that's in the alarm zero seconds register so it starts right here and that's where I'm setting the sleep seconds first so that's the variable that I'm passing in and that comes in as a 10 right and then just zero for the minutes zero for the uh, the hours don't care about the weekdays um, the, or the, the date, the, the month, or anything like that. And actually, what I'm doing here is I really don't have to set these to zero at all, but what I'm doing is actually writing to each of those registers because I need to clear the flags in the weekday register. So this flag here would be set to a one if I was alarming. And you have to set it back to a zero in order to reset the alarm. And that's one of the tricks with this part is that, you know, if, I, if I'm alarming at 632, I can't just go in and clear the alarm because it'll just reset again. So you have to wait for that alarm to not be true. Or in this case, since I'm just setting the seconds back to zero, it wouldn't be true because this would be now set to zero. This would be set to 10 seconds. And I can now clear the alarm and it's armed now to... Uh, to trigger again so that's how that works and then we actually initialize the sleep command which again is a direct lift from the uh, from my last video okay so now at this point the Arduino is in a complete deep sleep state it can only be woken up from that external interrupt okay so hopefully that makes sense and then the next thing here is we would wake up and we would wake up right at this point actually we would wake up down let me find the actual 
uh, interrupt here, right here. So void RTC MFP. So this is the this is the actual interrupt here. And uh, the only thing I'm doing there is just setting a flag because I want to get in and out. And I'm setting the MFP pin triggered flag to true. And then we actually in the loop, the next thing we do is wake up here and then we go and call this check alarm function, which is important because the alarm the alarms are a little flaky on the MCP7940, so you could get a false alarm. So what I'm doing here is first going and checking to see if that flag is true. So obviously it would be in this case because the pin did fall low, so it would be true. So then we just reset that flag back to false. We go in and check the weekday register. Specifically, we're looking at the alarm zero check, which is right here and I just talked about it alarm zero here which is the the flag there so if this bit here was set we know we actually did wake up and we we, we did have a true uh, alarm event so we read that out shift it over one two three and then and that with a one and then just make sure that it only that bit was set and if it was return a one else re return a zero and then when you look up here in the code, if this was true, so if that returned a one, it blinks the LED. Otherwise, it goes back to sleep. Okay, it was a false alarm. Let's just go back to sleep. And then we would wake back up here. And uh, well, actually we would wake back up and go back to sleep again at that point. Uh, so actually what I need to do is, is go back to sleep and bypass that. So I may make that change in the code or maybe just get rid of that altogether and it would just go back to its normal sleep, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, you may when, I, when you download this code, you may see some changes in there. But really the main point of this video is to show you how to wake up from using that external RTC. So, um, so anyway, and again, this is just test code. So anyway, that is pretty much it. So you could use this to wake yourself up in you know minutes, hours. And again, keep in mind that the other thing we're doing here is setting the alarm mask right here. And that's the, an important thing too. So the alarm mask tells the RTC what it's going to alarm on. So we have to go down to the alarm section I think I just passed it up right here and you see the alarm mask which it tells you it's going to wake up on a match of seconds, minutes, hours, days of the week, date or all of them seconds, minutes, hours, day, day of the week, date and month. So if you were to do something a little bit more complex you might have to set that. So if you were doing minutes make sure you set the mask for minutes hours you set it for that days of the week and so on so anyway keep that in mind and, and again watch my last video on this RTC so that all of that makes sense because I really get into the details of how to read and write the time with the RTC so anyway here's just another way to sleep the Arduino another example another thing to keep in your toolbox going forward and this is at 1.45 microamps of sleep current at 3.3 volts and I may even try to get that lower by completely killing power to the real-time clock. So relying solely on the battery backup here. And that would get us under one microamp of sleep current. So I may actually try that out. So anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. So I just made a quick change here to the code so that now um, it doesn't just you know, go back to sleep and then go to sleep again. So now what it'll do is it checks that alarm. And if the alarm is false, you know, it returns a zero, then go back to sleep. And then if it wakes back up again, it'll check that alarm. So as soon as the alarm returns a one, it breaks this while loop here and then goes and blinks the LED. So anyway, that's just a quick little change there. Sometimes, you know, when you make uh, these videos and you're going through and you actually think about what's happening uh, You uncover little bugs in your code. So anyway, there you go. So just a quick change there